my lighting sucks. That's something I used to say to myself all the time when I was starting out in Blender, but since then I've come up with tricks and systems that I use in all of my renders to give them the character that I've always wanted them to have. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you from scratch how I get my renders to look bright and airy, but not overexposed or dark and drab, just that perfect medium to really make them look professional. All right, so this is the first scene that I'm gonna break down and I'm gonna show you my entire process from scratch so there's no confusion and you really understand everything that I do. Now, today's video is brought to you by Grayscale Gorilla Plus. They've been a household name in the Cinema 4D community forever, and they just released their massive library for everybody, including us Blender users, and a really nice add-on to import these materials. So I'm gonna be using their library to build these scenes and show you what I do. Let's start out with the first problem, which is a lot of beginners use a lot of small lights to try to fill in those dark spaces, which just gives you no direction for what you're doing. Instead, use one really big light to really establish what you're planning to do in the scene. So make sure you really have an idea where the direction of the light is going and just kind of be clear about your direction here. So I'm just going to navigate through their lighting library, tons of HDRIs here. I'm just going to try to figure out what exactly I want here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick an HDRI that has a really big establishing light in it. Now they do have a lot of studio lighting. In this case, I wanna go ahead and use an indoor one. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. So as you can see, this HDRI has a large light source right here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this to the scene. Here's how it looks. And we have that huge establishing light right there. Now a really cool trick I learned in photography is using a big bounce board to reflect the light back. So here's how it looks without. Notice the light right here and then I put it back in and it's just gonna fill in. We're gonna have big highlights here and just getting those shadows to look nice, so. Now the next thing that's gonna make it really hard to get your scene to look bright and airy is having dark materials. So don't pick dark wood colors or dark stucco or anything that you're using. Make sure you're on the brighter end of the materials so it helps that light bounce around and reflect and just look really nice. So for the cushions on the chair, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this suede light beige material. It's really nice. Now since the suede has kind of a little bit of a yellow in it, I do wanna pick a wood material that has some yellow in it. And again, has to be a bright color. Um, I think the caramel oak number two is gonna be a really good choice for this one. We're gonna go ahead and get a bright colored cloth material for the blanket. Now this rug right here is gonna be really important because it is so bright, we're gonna get light that bounces down and up. We're gonna grab this concrete material for the floor. So for the cup, which that cup model is from Grayscale Gorilla Plus, they have some really cool models there. I'm gonna use this really nice ceramic material. Now this material I know is gonna be really bright and bounce that light around, so we're gonna use this a drywall material for the wall behind the chair. Now, Grayscale Gorilla Plus comes with an add-on for Blender that's gonna import and plug in all of your image textures for you, so you don't have to do that. And what's nice is once you're done, you can make those materials assets in the asset browser, so you never really have to import them again. So it really makes your life super easy. Now, the next thing that is gonna really sell the fact that this is a bright, airy render is having these spots of highlights all around your scene, which is something that gobos are really, really nice for. So I'm gonna look at the animated gobos section, and because this is kind of an indoor scene, I'm gonna go ahead and use this window gobo. All right, so I'm gonna have one kind of hit the chair right here, and then I wanna have one more back here just to kind of have some highlights back there, but look how nice this looks. Now, when it comes to how bright you should make these gobos, I try to make them almost overexposed, which like that's overexposed. We try to just get pretty close to overexposed that we still have some data for post-processing, but still is brighter than the establishing light. All right, the scene is all finished. So let me recap everything that we did so you can apply this to your scenes. So the biggest thing, have a big establishing light. This HDRI that we picked had a big window, that's the light. Uh, we also used bright colored materials that is really going to help bounce that light around and make it feel bright and airy. Uh, we used gobos to get those highlights and we also used like this big bounce board to bounce the light around to make it nice and soft. Uh, all of that combined is why the render looks so nice. Um, so there you go. Let's go ahead and hop on to the next scene. All right, so for this next one, I kind of want to have a little bit of fun and create a MoGraph looking scene. I'm just going to take this uh, ball here and just cut it up into four pieces. So that'll give me some opportunities to add some materials. I'm just going to pull up on these edges and then bevel it. And this is where the ball is going to be able to roll. Now, style wise, I'm going to cut it in half the same way that I did to the sphere. And that'll kind of keep it a really cool looking style. All right, the scene is now ready for materials. And part of my process is I like to add the materials before 
before I add the lighting, depending on what I'm doing. So for this example, I'm going to add the materials first because that largely affects the decisions I have to make for lighting later because the way things are going to be bouncing around. Again, sticking to the idea of having bright colored materials, I'm going to start with this marble material. I'm going to go ahead and grab a nice, just simple plastic material. This blue looks really good. Let's take it a different direction. I'm going to grab this composite wood. I like this one. We're going to get this brass hammered uh, material. Now, I want to give myself a challenge on this scene and just use one light to light the entire scene. Um, I'm looking at the area light map HDRIs here, and honestly, this one is probably going to be really good because it's going to be pretty dramatic, add some detail, uh, and also present that challenge that I'll show you how I like to go around it. All right, so I applied it to the uh, the world. Um, typically, I'm not going to be using them like this, but I want it to be as big as possible. Otherwise, you would apply them to area lights and use them as more controlled, really cool things like that. Uh, but here it is, and I'm just going to go ahead and I want, you know, rotating it. I'm just kind of put it back where I had it and giving it a really nice highlight right there. Now, like I showed in the other scene, I'm going to use another reflective uh, white wall to bounce that light around, but it's still too dark. So here's a fun hack. You just apply a white material to the board, and then here on the value, I'm just going to pump the value up to a value of two, and that is going to reflect even more light onto the scene. I mean, you can go insane with it, maybe like 20 and overblow everything. So it's really going to bounce that light even better. So you can kind of hack it and get a really nice scene with just one light. Now, when it comes to lighting and trying to get the most out of your scene, uh, never ignore post-processing. So I'm gonna head over to Photoshop and use one of their tools and I'm gonna show you how I get the most out of my lighting for my scenes. So we're here in Photoshop and I love to use uh, curves uh, for this and just to boost it a little bit because we have a pretty good highlight here uh, and it's, you know, like I said, almost overexposed. So we want to be careful and, you know, make sure we don't blow that out. So what I'm going to do is just get a dot here and get a dot here and you can see how quickly it really makes that scene nice and bright and you can really play with all of this here. Um, but what I don't like to do is this, you know, start making those dark portions darker. We definitely want to have um, healthy amount of contrast, but we want this to look nice. And you can go in here and say, add a little bit of texture, possibly clarity, but I'm going to leave that be, maybe boost that up. Uh, contrast can be brought up a little bit, uh, but here it is all finished and beautiful and bright. So there you go. This is the finished piece. And that is my whole lighting tutorial. Uh, I've done a couple, uh, but really I haven't done one step by step kind of getting into the nitty gritty of my whole lighting process. So that is that's that. Uh, I want to give the biggest thank you to Grayscale Gorilla Plus for sponsoring the channel. They're actually the people that I found out about Blender from to begin with. I was using Cinema 4D before I was using Blender. Uh, so it's so cool to be sponsored by these guys. I actually believe in what they're doing and I believe in their product. So if you want to check out Grayscale Gorilla Plus, that's going to be linked in the description. Again, I love these guys. I love what they're doing and they're really putting out quality. Uh, so with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.